being willing to still be a safe place for them to say no. And if you are willing to kind of feel and work through and take care of your disappointment without putting that on their shoulders, I think will create so many more yeses for you down the line and will feel much more empowering for you and your relationship. Welcome to the Get Your Marriage On podcast. I'm your host, Dan Purcell, a Christian marriage and intimacy expert and coach. I'm on a mission to help couples have the best sex and most emotionally intimate marriages possible. Our episodes cover topics you've always wondered about and are packed with practical advice designed to help you take your marriage to the next level. Welcome, everyone. This is our third September episode, so this is also going to be a really fun and spicy podcast to give you inspiration and ideas to make the most out of your September. Today, we get to talk about how to share your fantasies with your spouse, which is really hard to do sometimes. This is about the value of adding novelty and spice to your marriage relationship. In preparation for this episode, we polled our Instagram audience by asking them a bunch of yes, no, maybe questions, and some of them were really spicy. And listen to the end to see how your own responses line up with uh, those of our general audience for those types of questions. Jacqueline is my guest, and she joins me on this podcast. I'm so grateful to have Jacqueline as a member of my Get Your Marriage On team. You may have seen Jacqueline on our Instagram as she creates a lot of fun and entertaining reels for you to watch. Jacqueline's been married for over 15 years and has four boys, and she's also a certified life coach and loves helping other individuals have more peace and comfort with sexuality for themselves and in their marriages. I want you to know that our women's small group coaching enrollment is open right now. This is a program that's limited to just 10 women and you meet weekly for 12 weeks and it starts October 1st. This is ideal for anyone that wants a stronger, more intimate relationship with their husband or to understand themselves better in their marriage. This group is limited to only 10 women and five of the spots have already been filled. So if you're interested, you might want to act fast. All the details are on our website. You go to getyourmarriageon.com, click on programs, and then women's small group coaching, or just click on the link in the show notes. Jacqueline, it's great to have you on the podcast today. How are you? I am doing so good. How are you? Good. So today we get to talk about yes, no, maybe lists. <laughs> I am so excited. So I have a few yes, no, maybe questions for you. I want to get to know you yeah. a little bit, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, bring it. All right. Tomatoes on a salad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> You're definitely not a tomato person? No. No, not All on right. a salad. <laughs> okay. All right. Second question. Dancing in the rain. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. What about you? I want to know yours, too. Me? Would yeah. You heck in yeah. Dance yeah. in the rain. Yeah. 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 My third one. Would you join a women's hockey league? Oh, good one, huh? Yeah, that was a good one. I, I'm going to say yes, because all of my, my husband and all my boys play hockey and uh-huh. I'm the I'm the odd woman out. So <laughs> I would say yes for the sake of I would really love to love what they love. So that's good. Cool, cool. OK, my turn. Mine are a little bit. Yours were so short and sweet. I have mine are a little bit in depth. Okay? <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> well, the first one's pretty easy. Would you go skydiving as a date night? No. 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 Okay. Uh-uh. Maybe. Um, I, I guess I could say maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. If if you had the opportunity to go like job shadow a research group in Antarctica for an entire month, let's say you and your spouse together and your kids were all taken care of. Would you go? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> That's my default I know. answer. Well, there's, I can see like that would sound so exciting and adventurous, but there's also yeah. the part of like I, I'm saying goodbye to the things I love and my comforts. And Antarctica yes. is not going to be a comfortable place. So can it I tolerate wouldn't. a month of discomfort? But holy cow, what a great once in a lifetime opportunity. So Absolutely. Okay. And my last one. Would you ever just wake up, drive to the airport, pick the first flight leaving, and just go on a vacation for a few days? Just totally yes. spontaneous. Yes. Okay. Uh, yep, absolutely. <laughs> We've done something similar before. So 
Yes. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. That's yeah, a yeah, story yeah. for another day. I need to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We talked about it in a previous podcast episode. Yeah, but awesome. That's so fun. So, of course, these are more casual ones, but we're going to talk about some more intimate ones that you could ask your spouse towards the end of this episode. So you want to listen to the very end because we actually polled our audience on Instagram and all of our social accounts about their yes, no, maybe. So make sure you listen to that. But I want to ask you, Jacqueline, why is it helpful to talk to your spouse about your yes, no, maybes, and especially about your yes, no, maybes in the bedroom? Outside of just it being a great communication tool of just getting to know your spouse better, um, I think it's important to also maybe even to get to know yourself better. Like, what are my limits? What are my yeses? What are my noes? Like, hard noes? What are some things that I may be willing to try that I've never tried before? And learning that about your spouse also, I think, can be really important as a way of getting to know you, communicating, um, being able to try new things that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Um, but I don't know. What do you think? I like that, too. Like when you asked me the Antarctica question, I said no at first. But then it like shifted to maybe the more I thought about it. And that's, that's the point, yeah. right? Sometimes we go through our marriages without thinking about why we do things or thinking about other possibilities. So this kind of really peels back the curtain a bit to kind of see. And also, it's helpful to know like your absolute no on tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. That. But I think <laughs> the heart of the whole matter, and I think the heart of this episode, is how important variety is for a married couple. Because having a sexual relationship in and of itself introduces a lot of challenges. But then to be able to sustain a vibrant sexual relationship over the length of a long-term marriage, that adds whole new layers of complexity too. So I think variety is so vital if you want to be married long-term. So this like yes, no, maybe is an opportunity to, I guess, ask and introduce more variety into the bedroom. I love it. Yeah, I agree. They did a study about uh, animal husbandry. So this is like breeding animals for livestock and things like that. They're looking for efficiency here. So they have a ram uh, paired with a ewe. That's a female sheep. And they're like timing how long it takes for them to copulate in this study. And when they introduce the same ewe over and over to the same ram, the length of time it takes for the ram to finish his business gets longer and longer and longer and longer. And then after that, they introduce a new ram. He like can like mount up and get his business done a lot shorter. So even it just mammals and in general, there's something about newness and variety that helps with our sexual capacity to kind of be more on point. Things don't get stale. And I'm not saying go swap out your <laughs> spouse for someone else. That is absolutely mm -hmm. not what I'm saying. But you can be married to the same person, but have a different marriage, right? You can be married to the same person, but the newness of the experience, the newness of being with this new person in a new context can definitely add that much needed, like, you know, pizzazz you need in your relationship, that eros energy in your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. We are drawn. I think we're drawn to new things. We're drawn to wanting a variety. Um, like why women love to go shopping and buy new clothes. It's not that we don't have enough clothes, right? <laughs> right. Is that we're right. drawn to like, oh, I want to try something new. Um, I want a new car. I want, even if your car works great, you're going to go look for a new car because it's fun and it's exciting. And I think as human beings, we're kind of drawn to like, let's try something new. Let's get out of this, like you were talking about, this stale mode of doing the same thing over and over, the mundane so yeah, variety is important. But I think there's an enormous amount of pressure and forces that want to keep us in the in the ruts, in the mundane, in the ordinary. Any yeah. come to mind for you why we tend to just gravitate it's towards those things? Easy. It's easy. <laughs> um, it requires little effort and little amount of energy to just keep doing things the same way over and over and over. Your brain, as much as we want variety, right? As much as we kind of crave something new and exciting, we also have this part of us that really wants to fall back into just doing the same thing because it's safe. It doesn't push us out of our comfort zone and our, our body and our, like our brain really loves the comfort zone. So we're kind of while wired to also want variety. We're also kind of wired to do what's easy. And it's really easy to kind of stay in the same dance that you've always danced before. 
without having to try or learn something new or be uncomfortable or have even like hard discussions or sometimes yes, no, maybe, you know, when we get to some of these questions um, at the end of the podcast episode, even just asking your spouse those questions can feel scary. <laughs> yes. It can feel uncomfortable yes. to ask and answer uh-huh. and be truthful with how you actually, like how you're really feeling um, about a certain subject. And if you would be willing to try it, if it really is a hard no. So I think that's a lot of our, what, kind of comes down to it and we're like oh like the everyday life gets busy especially when we were talking this month of September we have our September challenge uh, going on and a lot of answers I get from people that are like when you know we ask how's it going for you a lot of times the answer is well life is kind of getting in the way and so Mm -hmm. I think it just is easy to kind of stay the same and that's why I love this month of September during the September challenge is that it kind of it really does challenge you to get out of the same rut yes. of everyday life. Right. So I was helping a couple a long time ago. They went on a date. They're trying to revitalize their sex life. So going on a date, first of all, was a huge win for them. Mm-hmm. They came back from the date and there's still this little awkward. We're trying to figure out how to be intimate again after a long dry spell. Just watching a show is like they're their go-to in the evenings. It's so mm-hmm. easy to just turn on that. And they're both looking forward to having sex, but the show is just so much easier because it, frankly, looking back, they, they didn't have sex that night. They just watched TV and then they were too tired and they went to bed. But it's that mm-hmm. safety thing, right? Because there's something really exposing about undressing in front of your spouse or trying to make a different move than you usually do because it's a little scary. But I think that's the very thing. We need to, like, good marriages ask us to stick our necks out once in a while. <laughs> to be vulnerable. Yes, to be vulnerable, yeah. a little bit more vulnerable, to take a risk. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have an experience of, that you're willing to share of a time you took a risk, you were a little more vulnerable, and maybe it paid off, maybe it didn't? So it's this idea of good eros energy. That's the energy that uh, breeds life and excitement and passion to marriage it asks us to take you know stick our neck out once in a while to take a risk is there a time you took a risk in your marriage um i feel like because you know i think every marriage kind of has that story of of um not every marriage but i think a lot of marriages kind of have that story of one person who maybe desires sex more often than the other person desires it and i can't even imagine how it was for my spouse who tends to want sex more often than I do tends to be more of that higher desire level. But I think any time, any time that I'm like, oh, this kind of sounds fun, like that, this would be something that I would totally be into right now. And I kind of have to initiate, which is something that we kind of decided together, like, because I knew he was always a yes. Yes. Um, he was always going to be a yes, that we kind of put the ball in my court. Um, mm-hmm. for our relationship which is great <laughs> and not ways. great but you have <laughs> a lot of great. more pressure yeah but it and I, this is, it's just so funny because like I love him so much like I love my husband more than anything and I know he would never ever make fun of me I know he's always going to say yes and I still have that piece of me that's like I feel kind of dumb like initiating <sighs> like oh like saying this is what I want right now feels so exposing and so vulnerable that it like my body will almost like it's like a visceral reaction to just having to expose myself in the smallest way being like hey are would you be into this like tonight do you want to like give us a go and I feel that like it gets easier I think every time like I think the the period of hesitation gets shorter but it's still is there Mm -hmm. every time well, that's oh. how you know you're on the right track because yeah. it's supposed to be a little risky. That's why. Yeah. That's how you know you're you're on the right track at in, infusing your marriage with more of this joyful eros energy. Yeah. So it is, it is like it's a very, very risky, vulnerable thing, even if you're pretty sure your sauce is going to be on board yeah. when you're like pr- pretty sure about that. It's still like you can be a very difficult, a very difficult thing going forward. So Right. Because it's not 
the safe road. It's not. The it's safe not road. the safe road. The safe road would be turn on the TV and watch, you know, The Bachelorette, or I don't know, maybe your viewers. So watch The Bachelorette. <laughs> Whatever. We, lo- we love it. <laughs> you know, it's like hey, uh-huh. let's turn on the TV show instead of having to take that risk. Um, but one, I think I may have heard you say this at one point. The when you talk about taking that risk, the reward is equally, if not greater, than the risk that you took. So it's a very low, low risk to just turn on the TV. Mm-hmm. But your reward is very, very low also. Right. Right. So. Yeah. That makes sense. I agree. Like, for me, I'm a more of a gentle person. I'm not aggressive. I'm not an in-your-face kind of a guy at all. That might be a shock to some of you listening to this. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> 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 anyway, there was a time I, I was undressing at the end of the day in the closet. My wife is on the bed reading or something. And I just had this crazy idea. So I, I undressed completely. I was naked. And I, I tied a tie, like like one of my, my neckties. So I was only wearing a tie. And I come out. And I adopt this persona, like I'm all business. And <laughs> then, I, I, awesome. then I had this idea, like, I, I take the tie off my my neck and I put it around her wrists and like you're under arrest. It is absolutely illegal for a woman as beautiful as you are to be out here. This cannot happen. And it was a big risk for me to kind of step into a persona, kind of a role play. Mm-hmm. But um, my wife, she loved it. <laughs> right? She loved yep. that. Like that because it's the energy of like you are so beautiful. Like yes. Like. Th- how how dare you be so beautiful in my presence? <laughs> like, yes. Like it's, it's, it's fun energy, but yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking, like, I think it's so interesting because my husband, it tends to be a little bit more in your face and lo- uh-huh. not like loud, but he's definitely, his presence is known. He has a very obvious presence in the world. But when he, like when we are together, he's like a teddy bear. Like I, it just... I think it is so sweet how unsure he is almost of himself, <laughs> you know, and I'm mm-hmm. listening to your story. But it's endearing, like, right? Uh-huh. It is endearing, but I'm listening to your story and I'm like, you know what? If we just were willing to take more risks and willing to even sit with the discomfort of that risk not paying off, how much more confident would we be going into it, being able to do a role play like that? You know, not that I necessarily want, you know, him to be really aggressive, you know, intimate wise, but just being able to have that confidence going into it to be able to do something like that and like take that risk, I think it would pay off. I think it would. Yeah. All right. Let's also be realistic. There's also times when the answer is a no. And it yeah. can be absolutely devastating and disappointing. Like I I still have Maybe PTSD sounds too severe, but I have a few memories of times when I got up all the courage I could muster to ask my wife something sexually of something I really wanted. And the answer was a no. And it felt like such a deep cutting rejection. Just the, even those memories of it, just I can feel it in my body still. Yeah, yeah. I call it little T trauma. That's definitely, I have lots of little T trauma. And, yeah. um, you know, my wife and I talk about that experience time to time. And she has a little tea trauma from that too. So you don't always get what you want. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's part of being human is mm-hmm. being able to understand that disappointment is going to come from time to time. And sometimes it can feel devastating. Sometimes it really can. But I think the trick is, especially when we're talking about this risk, there is always a risk of being disappointed if you put yourself out there. If you talk about something You know, we're going to talk about some of these yes, no, maybe questions at the end. And some of them are a little bit spicy. Like some of them are questions that maybe you really would love to try. And maybe he or she just really like it's a hard no. And so being willing, number one, to allow your spouse to be a no without reacting to them. Like you can feel disappointed and not treat them from that place of disappointment, if that makes sense. Um, So I think learning how to feel disappointed without treating your partner differently, um, being able to manage how you're feeling and being able to take care of yourself because it does suck. Like sometimes it just sucks and we really wish that it could be different or um, 
we wish that maybe they were more willing to try something. But I think showing love for yourself, showing love for your partner, um, giving them the space to say no. I think this was something that was really big for me personally. Not that my husband ever held this against me ever. Not that he would ever have done this. But me personally, I felt like, oh my gosh, I have to say yes. Like this is something. This is important for us. But if I like, if it was a hard no, and I tried to push myself through it, all it did was create resentment down the line. Mm -hmm. Um, So realizing that by allowing your partner the space to say no. By allowing yourself to feel disappointed without making it mean anything bad about either of you, I think in the long term is going to create a lot more yeses. Mm-hmm. When yourself feels safe to say no, when you feel safe to ask, when you feel safe to feel disappointed, and if yourself does decide to say no, I think creates a very unconditionally loving space for you to grow closer together, to have more discussions about things, maybe even being more willing to try things that you wouldn't have in the past. So I think creating that space allows for more yeses down the line. I love it. I think we should yeah. underline that, highlight it, and circle that. That was like yeah. fantastic. And it's this idea that your capacity to handle a no and a disappointment is the measure of your marriage. It's not when things are going great and sunny. It's how do you handle can you handle this appointment? Because frankly, to be married with someone means they're going to be disappointed because they think yes. differently than you do. They're wired yeah. differently than you. They have a different body than you do. They have different traumas. Experiences than you Experiences and backgrounds exactly. and, and families. Perspectives. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe is there a metaphor that would make sense that might include a little red fruit? <laughs> I, when you asked me that yes, no, maybe question at the beginning, I'm like, he did this on purpose. <laughs> um, yeah, I like, I don't know why. I have just, I've hated tomatoes my entire life. Um, I've always been a really picky eater. And as I've gotten older, like that, my palate has shifted significantly. I'll try so many more things and enjoy so many more things, but I have never really learned or my body has just always hated tomatoes, specifically fresh tomatoes. Like I love salsa, I love spaghetti sauce, um, ketchup. I know that probably doesn't count, but I've tried and I have tried so hard because, you know, especially farmers, when they pick that fresh tomato off the vine and they'll just bite it and they're like, nothing is better than a tomato off the vine. I'm like, uh, yeah, there's so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I hate them. And so I think of that when I think of, especially, I love analogies. Like I I try to come up with analogies to express how I feel because I think it takes emotion a little bit out of the situation. So you can kind of view it a little bit more logically and no one's feelings are hurt um, and I can express myself better. So this is something that I tend to use. It's like, I can try a tomato and I've tried it so many times, but it's just a no for me. And there might be other things, you know, like, oh, I like spaghetti sauce and I like salsa and, you know, so I'll try those and I, and I like those. But this one thing is just a no. And so I think going to your partner and talking about your yes, no, maybes, talking about things you want to try, um, adding more variety. I think it's important to remember, like we had just said, they are completely different and they might have things that are just a no. And I think that you may have this fantasy, right, of, of being able to move forward with something like this or wanting this in the bedroom. And maybe they're willing and maybe it's a hard no. And it doesn't mean that they there's something wrong with them. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you because you want it. But it's a no for them. Sometimes it's just a no. And it really, that's it. That's it. That's as far as it goes. And so being, that's why I had mentioned, like, being willing to let it be a no and to be disappointed is like, that's totally valid to be disappointed that we hate tomatoes and I've never, that's just not going to be a yes for me ever. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. And there are so many other things that you can try and working together and really communicating together to maybe you're not going to get this thing, right? Maybe this fantasy that you have in your mind of what it should look like um, or what the perfect experience would be or the perfect position or this thing, you really, whatever it is. Uh, maybe that's going to be a no, but you can work together to c- come up with your, like to co-create an experience, a position, a whatever 
right? A fantasy that is both of you together creating this experience. And it might be different than what you originally thought, but it can be just as amazing. And it doesn't mean that he or she has to ever love tomatoes in order for it to do that. Yeah. So it's like moving into this like collaborative space. Can we collaborate together? And I think that, you know, we've touched on yeses. We've talked about noes just now. And this is opening the conversation to the maybe side of things. Like, yeah, I, I could be okay with this if we can work out these kinds of parameters. And it's about, yeah. are you willing to be open and, and see the other person fully? Like I, some of our best intimate experiences, and I mean intimacy in the broad sense, not as a euphemism for sex, but our best intimate experiences in my marriage has been when I could really see my wife for who she is as a whole person and just accept and love all of that. And she could see me as a whole person and love and accept all of that, even if I have different desires than she does. And it might mean, look, I know this is hard for you. My, you know, it's as if speaking to my wife, I know this is hard for mm-hmm. you. This is difficult space, but so I can work this way. Or it's like, I know this is really important to you and this is, this is hard for me to do, but because I love you, maybe we can shift into this other space. And when you can move into a maybe as a collaborative, it it pressures the marriage to grow up and it in, invites us as people to grow and expand who we are. It's an expansion. It's a opening up. It's a growing up of who we are. And I think that's one of the beauties of marriage is, is it pushes on us to continually grow up. I agree. I And I think that's a really interesting thing to note because I'm thinking of just because this is something my husband and I have been working on pretty significantly for the last probably three-ish years. And my initial instinct was to talk about like, you know, your body's really telling if you ask some of these questions, you know. Um, one of the ones that just immediately comes to mind is like, would you be willing to try anal sex, right? Like that's that's pretty significant. That's a pretty, you know, divided question. Mm-hmm. Um, and so at first I wanted to say, you know, pay attention to how your body reacts to the question, like right off the bat. Is it like, oh, that's a no, that's my tomato. And there's no way I'm ever going to like that. Um, however, when you were talking about kind of opening that door a little bit, like, is this, is this really a hard no? Like, it's okay to question that. Say, okay, is there ever a time I could see this being a, a maybe? Like, is that, is that door even willing to be opened? And we're talking and about the able back to door. Grow up? specifically right <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome um, <laughs> but if you grow like i'm thinking now my 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 nose a lot of my nose have shifted into movies, right. Mm-hmm. right but it really came from knowing wholeheartedly that i wasn't going to be punished if i said no i wasn't right. going to be treated differently if i said no um, and as we kind of create a really safe place and or a safe space in each other to say yes or no, to share our our yeses, all of that without judgment, being able to love each other through that vulnerableness that we share through just talking about it. I'm not even talking about like engaging in it, but just having the conversation that has opened the door for so many more maybes. Mm-hmm. that have turned into yeses and i'm just like oh my gosh i can't believe i thought this was like the worst thing ever uh-huh. you know just a few years ago and now i'm like i can't imagine our life without it right it's richer without, now it's yeah it. that's fantastic well jacqueline let's get into it let's get into the yes okay. no maybe questions we polled our audience and what they said this is gonna be exciting. all right and just for our listeners some of these you're gonna feel like like what jacqueline just said like you're a body reaction like definitely you gross no like and that's okay but just pay attention or some of you might go feel super excited about these ideas too Mm -hmm. it might trigger you one way or the other and that's fine just try to be neutral about it and just pay attention to yourself in these things how you feel all right so i'll just share the question and, and these are some of the yes no maybes that we pulled our audience so would you enjoy being woken up to your spouse initiating sex 71% 71% said yes, 13% said no, and 16% said maybe. Huh. All right. 
That's funny. I just have to share. Like some of these, uh-huh. I'm going to just have to share personal experience. I was laughing at this one. Uh-huh. <laughs> my husband knows. Like you do not interrupt my sleep. Right? <laughs> Never, <laughs> ever, under any condition. Ever. <laughs> so I was laughing. I'm like, 71% said yes. Like I, but I, I also, I don't sleep great. So my sleep is so precious. Anyway. Uh-huh. Okay. Next. Would you send your spouse a naked picture of yourself? 64% said yes, 22% said no, and 13% said maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that one is tricky. I was thinking of all the kind of, like, with technology and those images being saved in the ether. I'm like, what are I, In uh-huh. theory, in theory, right. maybe I would. Okay. Well, that's why the would, Just Between Us, just a plug, but that's why the Just Between yeah. Us app exists for that very concern. Right. I love it. Would you explore different kinds of sexual communication? For example, like moaning or dirty talk. 76% said absolutely. Uh-huh. Only 3% said no and 22% said maybe. Huh. So that was interesting. There was a huge skew on that one. Would you be up for role play in the bedroom? 42% said yes. 24% said not for me. And 34% said maybe. So that was a that little was- bit more even. That's more divided, yeah. Uh-huh. That's a little bit more divided. So I'm surprised because I think people role play more often than they think they really do. I think they, yeah, I agree. It, it, just, it isn't necessarily dressing up as your favorite character, you uh, know? <laughs> uh-huh. It's not like I'm walking in as Princess Leia or anything. You know? <laughs> right. And he's Han Solo, right? Right. <laughs> or whatever. Right. I think, That's not always it. Yeah. I'm I assuming agree. he's Han Solo. Maybe he's <laughs> Chewbacca. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Harrison Ford forever. I love him. Okay. Would you have sex while staying at your in-laws? 75% said totally. So that uh-huh. one very, very much approved. They don't uh-huh. care who's in the uh-huh. house. <laughs> 11% said nope. And 14% said maybe. Hmm. Would you talk to your spouse about fantasies that you have? This one kind of surprised me. I'm not going to lie, because this one can be very vulnerable to yes. like really dig in and discuss, you know, what's anyway. For me, that would feel really vulnerable. And I would assume for many, but 59% said yes. So more oh. than half. Huh. Only 8% said no. And then we had a large chunk of 33% said maybe. So the no, I, I think that one, that one was a bit of a shock for me. I thought that one would be a little bit more skewed. Okay. Yeah. Would you have sex in the shower? This is not surprising. 79% said yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> 11% said pass and 10% said maybe. So that one was very much in favor. Would you get frisky in a hot tub? Mm-hmm. 75% said of course. Nice. That one again, not surprising. Ten uh-huh. percent said no, and fifteen percent said maybe. All right, skinny dip in a backyard pool, just you and your spouse, so no one else there. Seventy-six uh-huh. percent said yes. Yes, nice. Ten percent said no. Fourteen percent said maybe. I don't know why that one was a little more surprising to me. I don't know. Maybe I think there's more involved to skinny dip. I think there's more exposure yeah, potential. There's way more exposure. So that one was surprising, uh-huh. but. I guess if you really are assuming that you're totally secluded, maybe that's different. Yeah. Okay. Would you pull over somewhere secluded and make out in the car? 86% said absolutely. Uh Only 1% said no. And 12% said maybe. Okay. Would you enjoy being intimate outdoors under the stars? 81% said yes. 4% no. And 15% maybe. That one didn't surprise me at all either. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to get to a little bit more, a little bit more Spicier risk. Spicier ones. All right. <laughs> Would you be willing to try anal sex with your partner? 32% said yes. And 52% said no. So that mm-hmm. one, that one was our first no was more skewed forward. And then 16% said maybe. Gotcha. Would you enjoy eating food off of your spouse? Like whipped cream, chocolate syrup, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, 58% said yes. 16% said no, 27% said maybe. I would expect that to be higher, yes. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, 58%. But I don't know. I kind of view the maybes as more of a yes. I don't uh-huh. know why. Like mentally I do that. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, that was pretty good. Like almost 80%. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. that said they might be willing. Okay. It's maybe. Depends on what the food is. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe maybe they hate whipped cream. Uh-huh. Right, exactly. <laughs> or, it depends. Okay. Mm-hmm. If your spouse was sick but was still interested in sex, would you move forward? 52% said yes. 16% said no. And 32% said maybe. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I know this is like so random and maybe this is like really personal, but for some reason, when my husband is sick, I'm like, I want it so much. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why that's like in my brain because I know that he's like totally not thinking about it at all. Right. Because he's like, doesn't feel good and kind of wants to rest. And I can tell you, I have a hundred percent success rate. (laughs) He doesn't (laughs) care that he's sick. <laughs> but that's an easier space to move to because there's no power struggle None. in that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You so, can totally 100% own your desire in that moment. Yeah. And it doesn't mean anything. Like it has a very positive meaning, not no negative meanings. Exactly. Exactly. Totally my choice. And he, like I said, he's always a yes. So, but sometimes I'm like, how sick are you? How sick? How sick are you really? Uh-huh. Let's, let's uh-huh. test this out. <laughs> he, he's never been too sick. So, <laughs> okay. Good for him. I'm glad. Yeah. Would you enjoy 69? 63% said yes. Not 69%? Not 69. Isn't that so disappointing? <laughs> I know. Uh-huh. 63 Six- said yes. 63 uh-huh. said yes. I don't know why that one. That one shocked me a little bit too. I feel like it to be lower. I expected that one to be a little bit lower. I don't know why. Um, 15% said no, and 22% said possibly. Mm -hmm. Would you enjoy being handcuffed or tied down? 44% said yes. 24% said no, and 31% said maybe. Huh, that's interesting. I would have expected the number to be a little different. I, I agree. Okay, would you enjoy being spanked by your spouse during sex? Uh huh. This one was almost even across the board. 38% said yes, Mm -hmm. 35% said no, and 26% said maybe. Yeah, that is pretty even split. That's Mm -hmm. pretty even split. Would you ever film you and your spouse having sex to watch together later? Uh 35% said yes, 38% said no, so slightly more no, and then 28% said maybe. So it's like the spanking crowd overlaps with the uh, filming crowd. Yeah. Yes. Uh Yep. Would you enjoy creating a safe word to use in the bedroom for times you feel uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. 57% said yes. I expect that to be higher. I, well, I, I'm a little bit just like, I, I feel excited by that just by the, the idea of like, okay, people are willing to try like people are willing to try things and if they might feel uncomfortable then they have a word to say Uh uh-huh yeah not for me yeah um 14 percent said no and 29 percent said maybe and that was it that those are all of our questions that's excellent all right so inside the intimately us app we have what's called the sexploration list and it essentially is a compilation of many yes, no, maybe questions you and your spouse can ask each other. You can do it separately on your own phones and it will you know, compare your results. So that's a tool you can use. If you're brave, you can Google yes, no, maybe lists for married couples and see what comes up. And this is a great way to start a conversation with your spouse. But it's not about the lists. It's not about the questions. I think the heart of the matter is variety is really important is what keeps the marriage vital and you need to stick your neck out once in a while and take a risk and you need to learn how to tolerate disappointment and nose in your relationship with grace because i think that's what the measure of the marriage isn't how things are going when everything's going well it's can you handle disappointments but jacqueline i really appreciate the time you took to ask our instagram audience about their preferences and things and i'm sure there's a lot of surprises like we discussed But as we talk about the broader theme of variety in bedrooms and taking risks and learning to be more collaborative, do you have any last thoughts you want to share? I think that it is really easy if you're the partner who tends to be more of a yes to trying new things. I think it can be really easy to kind of blame the lack of variety on the partner who maybe wants to say more no's or Mm -hmm. has more hard no's. 
But I think that there's a lot of power that you have, even if you are the yes person, to collaborate with your partner and create a sexual space, an intimate space, a marriage that you both really love and are really excited about. And so I think just really be open-minded as you share more and communicate more about what you're willing to try, what you're not willing to try. And for the spouses who maybe are more of a no, to just kind of let yourself be curious as to why it's a no. I think curiosity can be a really great tool to get to know yourself better because sometimes it really is just like, well, I just never tried it. I've never thought about it. Or maybe there is a stigma, right, that you grew up with where, you know, for a really long time, I, I remember feeling like or thinking for some reason, like oral sex is so bad. I can't believe people are doing this. Right. But then you start to experience it and you start specifically, you know, with your spouse. Right. Like mm -hmm. as you actually experience it together, you're like, what was so, why do I think this is so bad? Like, uh -huh. Right. Like, right. It's, it's, it, this can actually be really great. So I think sometimes being able to be curious with yourself why it's a no can be really mm -hmm. impactful and powerful for you. And if you are more of a yes person to really finding where your power is in the relationship to create more variety, even if your spouse maybe isn't as willing to try things, being willing to still be a safe place for them to say no and realizing like, you know, if you are that, that safe spot, if you are willing to kind of feel and work through and take care of your disappointment without, you know, putting that on their shoulders, I think will create so many more yeses for you down the line and will feel much more empowering for you and your relationship than just feeling like, oh, that's that's a you problem. You've got to fix this. And really making it just a collaborative effort between the two of you. Love it. To so good. Okay. So good. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, or even comment below and go see what other wonderful videos we have that will help you strengthen your marriage intimately.